live i've got peppermint tea let's just change this a little bit i'm going to do without the light because it's a bit bright and let's see who's here francis scott thank you says welcome home hey scott hey francis so um yes here i am i'm home i've just taken the tapes off my eyelids I will, I will put the light on just for a little bit so you can see my eyelids hey maddie um well, i'm just putting the light on so you can see my eyelids i'm not going to keep it on so you can see the bruising i can't really there it is they're closed so i've taken the tapes off across the scarring and i have to put i have to clean and put those back on but while they were off i thought i'd come and do a quick live because they look better without the tape on. Um, oh, we've got uh, Rich Mitch. Hey, he says, yeah, buddy. And Carty's here as well. Hey, Carty. So um, I thought I'd just do a little uh, check up in with you all because I've been obviously away. Hey, Hevs. Um, I've, uh, for those of you that, that are here and don't know, thank you, Francis. Uh, and we've got Nisky Pisky as well saying hi. And we've got... Uh, oh god it's going too quick and uh, we've got sherry hey sherry and uh tracy's here as well wowzers there's a lot of you and we've also got sibling.ca hey uh, you look beautiful so glad that you're on the men thank you so for those of you that don't know i'm going to go over it really really quickly um thank you maddie saying it's uh good to see you looking so well uh I, feel, I thought my breast implants were causing me a lot of health issues. There's something called breast implant illness. It's not really recognised by professional, um, in, by the medical profession, but there are hundreds of thousands of women that have problems and they're resolved when they have them removed. So I had an operation to get mine out. I've got my tits out again. And um, I went to Lithuania to have it done. So I've, I've slightly lost my voice. Um, hey, Barry. Hey, Claire. Looking radiant. So happy the surgery went well. Thank you. Uh, and drawn by senses here. Hello, Claire. How are you doing? Thank you. Really good. Um, oh, my throat's going. So I've got a peppermint tea. Cheers. I never drank peppermint tea in my life, but we'll get on to the reasons behind it. Um, so yeah, I went to Lithuania. I actually managed to get a cancellation. So they were booked up. This clinic becomes highly recommended. Uh, they're called Nord Aesthetics and they're in Kaunas in Lithuania, which is not too far from the airport. And I was trying to get booked in with them a while back, but they were fully booked way up till spring, summer. So I said, can I just go on your cancellation list? I can't wait that long. If you get a cancellation, can I have it? And they said, yes, they would, which was amazing. And Rockdown Plus says, welcome back. Thank you, Rockdown Plus. Um, John says, peppermint tea, bad tummy. Yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> um, so I got a cancellation. They rang me up and everything just fell into place. So I had, um, the operation was actually approved to have it here for free on the NHS. But with that comes an unknown waiting list. So um, I didn't want to, I just wanted to go with whoever would get them out quickest. And uh, Lithuania called and said, look, we can, we can do it next week, which was crazy scary, like to think that I have to travel in, in these times with the confusing stuff, you know, with what tests you have to do and all the rest of it. But everything kind of fell into place because they, uh, the date was when I was already off work for two weeks so that was perfect I had no other plans and uh, Lithuania suddenly went from amber to green just before for two days before I was due to fly out everything went so perfectly in my in, in my favor it was amazing I even got the surgeon that was the most talked about and highly recommended in a Facebook group. Uh, her name is Goda, really lovely, empathetic, fellow curly haired lady. And um, so she was my surgeon. She would have been the person I would have chosen, but because it was a cancellation, I wouldn't have had that choice. So I was just lucky, lucky, lucky. And um, so whilst I was uh, having my implants removed, I uh, had already inquired about getting my eyelids done. So upper eyelid surgery, it's called upper blepharoplasty, 
which basically my eyelids were a bit too much. Um, <laughs> they were too much. Um, they, they were kind of like too much skin and they would hang down um, and it just looked aging and it made me look tired. Hey Lizzie Bean. And, um, and it's something I wanted to do for a while. So when I initially inquired with them, I also inquired about that and they were able to do both operations. Uh, Lizzie's driving, don't tell anyone, driving and watching. Don't watch, keep your eyes on the road. You don't need to look, you just need to hear, okay? Um, so uh, they were able to do my upper eyelids as well as the implant removal. And with the implant removal, I also had a lift and I had the scar tissue removed. So it's actually quite an intense operation. It's not a case of just cutting you open and pulling out the implant because they have to get the scar tissue as well because the scar tissue is what gets, um, it, it, it can uh, carry all of the poisons from the implants. So implants are actually made of a lot of toxic materials and they can leach into your body over time. If you imagine how hot your body is all the time, um, and you've got carcinogens in there so uh, you need the scar tissue removed as well and then of course they did a lift so that was more cuts and, sh and shifting shifting stuff around so uh, I think it was about three and a half hours the operation and it, everything went really smoothly the clinic they pick you up from the airport they take you to your accommodation and then they take you to all your appointments they text you the day before and tell you what time they're picking you up and um and then then obviously what time you they're picking you up for your surgery so the clinic were amazing absolutely highly recommend if anyone needs to have anything done they don't just do plastic surgery they also do what i think they call bariatrics so they, a lot of people come from all over the world. They have Americans and Canadians and everyone from all over Europe coming for various operations. So I highly, highly recommend. They treated me really well, looked after me brilliantly. And I saw the pictures of my implants in their capsules. So the, she managed to get them out inside the capsule still because what happens is if you cut the capsule whilst it's still in your body, there can be some nasty fluids inside the, the scar tissue that can then, of course, um, you know, go into, into your body and be absorbed, which you don't want. So she actually managed to pull them out with the scar tissue around. It looks gross. Um, if you're interested, you can easily find um, pictures and videos on online. Um, it's called, uh, an, it's called a, the operation is called an explant. And it's an on block, uh, which is where they remove the scar tissue around and the um, implants together. So I've seen pictures of, of the scar tissue. I think she said one side was a bit, the scar tissue was a bit thicker than the other. One of them did have about, I think she said 20 cc's of, of some sort of liquid in, which she wasn't too worried about. Uh, there is a rare cancer linked to uh, these implants, so particularly the ones I had, which is the textured. So they've got a texture on the outside. They were very popular for a long time, but then they've now been linked to causing a rare kind of cancer and some other issues as well. So um, you have to have the capsules tested for that cancer. So she sends my scar tissue off to check that, they, that uh, you don't have this cancer. If you do, for the most cases, just removing the implants and the scar tissue is the treatment. So even if it comes back that the uh, there is any cancer in the scar tissue, generally speaking, you've probably already solved the issue by removing them. Not always, but so that's not anything I'm, I'm worried about. I, I didn't have any of the other symptoms, but um, just be aware of it if anyone is... Um, is has implants or is thinking about getting them you need to be aware of a risk there as well so yeah um then when i came around from the operation um i didn't feel i mean obviously i didn't feel great couldn't move too much um but they'd given me something to stop me being sick which was amazing because the last two times i've had operations i felt really nauseous and and actually being sick um, not for a very long, prolonged period of time, but you don't want to be sick when you've 
just had surgery because you, you could potentially pop a stitch or something you don't want to be straining um uh, so a, a really embarrassing thing so i actually had to share a award with another lady a lady from sweden um first of all um i didn't know what she was in for she didn't know what i was in for we just got chatting and then i said well, i'm getting my implants removed because i think they're making me sick and then I said, what are you getting done? And she said, I'm getting implants. I have felt so bad. Um, and I, I just sort of explained that mine have been in 15 years and, and it's too, you know, it's too long and, and over time they can cause problems. So it, I felt a bit awkward about that because I was there trying to fix a problem that she was potentially getting herself into. But, um, you know, she'd already done it and it's, not, it's none of my business. So... Uh, I did feel slightly uh, awkward about it, but that was by the by. Hey, Corrine. Um, she was a very nice lady. And But the funny thing was when I came around from the operation is uh, I, I was naked except for the compression um, across the, the bandage across my chest. And obviously I was in bed um, and I needed a wee. And I was attached to a drip, or you, I don't know, a UV or something. I was attached to two different things. I had a thing on my legs, which kind of like pumps and applies pressure and, and then um, stops, which I guess is, is standard for after operations to kind of like um, get your blood moving maybe. But I was also attached to this, um, cat in the garden, I was also attached to this IV or drip or, or, or something that, that I had to stay attached to. So when I needed a wing, well, you were able to call the nurse by pressing a, a, a cord, which was brilliant. But I was still not that coherent. And um, yeah, uh, they had to, two nurses, one of them had to hold, like, hold me and the other had to hold the drip attached to me and walk me to the toilet. I'm naked from the waist down. And um, and then I thought they were going to come into the toilet with me, but luckily she held it at the door and pushed the door too. And I'm so glad I didn't need a poo. <laughs> but I think that's highly unlikely anyway. But um, it was just a bit embarrassing. You've been helped, being shuffled across the room. And of course, I've got my roommate sat over there. And I, I remember saying, this is so embarrassing. And they were like, don't worry about it. But um, yeah it had to be done so so um they pumped me full of antibiotics and then they gave me a load of antibiotics and this is where the peppermint tea comes in um so i was taking the antibiotics i had one a different one to take just once a day um and then i had one to take twice a day and i guess it's all precautionary but um I, last time I had antibiotics, I had an infection and I, I didn't have a good reaction to that. So um, I should have known that this wasn't going to work out too well, the, this amount of antibiotics. But I, I, I had a stomach pains pretty much since, um, since the operation. And apparently that's normal um, with uh, antibiotics. Most people will get some stomach pains. Uh, but it seemed to sort of get steadily worse and um, it got to the day before I was flying home and I was, I was literally limping because my stomach was, was so bad and um, so I'd had some food, I went back to my room and I just kind of laid down and then I started getting the worst pains in my stomach. It felt like someone's taken my intestines and wringing them every now and then and then there was like a storm of butterflies would come and it was like a storm of butterflies inside my stomach like violently fluttering and then the ringing of the intestines and then uh, so that was keeping me awake and I needed to get up to fly home so that was really unpleasant and of course I ended up with diarrhea as well um, by the early hours of the morning oh my god it was just horrendous but um actually luckily that stopped by the time i got picked up to go to the airport and since then i've been trying to look after my tummy so that's why i've got peppermint tea oh. 
I'd pretend it's nice, but it's really not. Um, hey, Erin, Erin's here. I loved your video on, um, what's it called? The new Parfums de Mali. Um, I was interested to see your video, Tara's video. I want to say Oriana. Is it Oriana? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Um, yeah, it sound, I had a feeling it was going to be... Hilary says, oh, peppermint tea is my favourite. Hey, Hills. Yes, Oriana. I had a feeling it was going to be nice, but not mega amazing. Um, how do you feel about it now? Because I looked at your comment and you said you, you definitely quite like it. Um, but I wonder if it's like a lot of people are saying it's com comparing it to different stuff. So I'm curious to try it, but I have um, low expectations. It's the okayest $320 perfume ever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what I thought might be a, that sort of answer. Yeah, it's not worth it. No. Oh. I still want to try it. I try it and form my own opinions. Um, but it's weird. It, they didn't, it didn't come with a load of hype, did it? It's like um, just suddenly there it was. There was no lead up to it, which is, you know, usually what brands do, isn't it? To sort of build a bit of hype to get some sales and some excitement going. So it's funny how it was just suddenly it wasn't there and then it was. Mm. Dry down is much more clean, sweet, creamy. Okay. Um, uh, Karine says, sometimes I'm glad to be allergic to antibiotics. Oh my, yeah, they're so bad for you. Um, so I obviously stopped taking them. Uh, I did, I've not taken any more. I just hope that I don't get any infections. <laughs> but it's not worth it. It's, it's agony. And as I say, my stomach's still a bit, um, a little bit sore. Um, uh, Tracy says, I have peppermint tea, evening and early morning, definitely a suva. Yeah, I'm going to try, I'm going to try and be a lot healthier now. You know, I've, I've got rid of this toxicity. I feel, um, even though I've just had quite a, a big surgery, and of course I do have some bru like bruising type pain across my chest. Um, I feel so much more alive. I feel... Uh, I, don't, I wouldn't say that there was a fog in my head, but there was this reluctance all the time with me. I, I felt like I was a lazy person because I didn't have the energy to do stuff. Um, everything just always felt a little bit like too much trouble. And then I woke up today and, and I, I felt so different and it was it's so strange. And I really hope that continues. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'm going to try and embrace a, a bit of a healthier life. Of, um, I've only just started drinking fruit teas, which I took some with me. Which I, I'm, I assume they're supposed to be healthy, but they're obviously healthier than coffee. Um, I haven't had alcohol uh, for, I don't know, but since a few days before I left for Lithuania, I only, I'm going to let everything heal nicely and um before i embark on some alcohol get my hydration up um any little worry relieved is a weight lifted tea is the best um uh erin says uh, ariana is almost like an orange sorry solly floor oh, orange blossom solly floor well that it does sound a bit dull um So let me know then, and this is a catch up, it's not all about me. So let me know what's going on with you. What are you wearing? I'm wearing something that I can't talk about. <laughs> um, I can tell you, I think I can tell you a couple of things. Uh, there's there's a, a launch, a Zoom launch that I'm gonna be attending on Saturday and it's with Pissara from Ducita. And it's the perfume collaboration that she's done with Oh My Soul. And talking of Orange Blossom, uh, that's all I'm going to say. I'm wearing it and I've, uh, she did ask people to, to try not to try it. But there was no way I wasn't going to try it. A beautiful uh, little travel size. I'm not going to show you because she did ask people not to say anything about it. Uh, but just um, just so you know... 
it is Smurfy Girly approved and I'll be telling you a lot more about it when I'm able to but I'm wearing that and it is beautiful mm. let's have a look um, Erin says my body doesn't process extreme painkillers very well I was given oxycodone when my gall when I had my gallbladder out and they had to give me another medicine to make me sleep through the nausea oh wow that's horrible um, Erin's wearing the Labo's Gayak 10 which is a Tokyo City exclusive um, Taffy's here, hey Taffy, she says couldn't tolerate the heavy duty stuff when she had soldier, shol, soldier surgery, so, shoulder surgery um, Heather's wearing pink praline and a lot of it, I, what's that? Tell me more uh, Tracy's hoping to join in on Saturday for the Deceita launch. Uh, probably can't as young as can't be quiet. Oh, you can probably just mute mute the mic, Tracy. Um, it's probably, well, I can't imagine, I don't know. <laughs> I'm saying we probably don't have to talk. I don't, I don't know, but um, I'm sure they won't mind if you mute the mic and just say, say that your, your, your son's a little bit, no, bit noisy. Mm. Hey Christy, um, Francis says she's wearing hot couture, uh, Karine knows a little bit about the new one from Ducetus, um, she said a few words about it so I know something is coming, can't wait, she's very talented. Yeah I think this is my favourite of her line so far, um, yeah it's really beautiful. Um, Karine's wearing Armani T Yulong. Maddie won an early sample of the Do City one. Really pretty, yes, pretty is the word for sure. Um, Heather says it's an indie artisan natural house from the US. So, so, well, so, well, hello, out of Ohio. Uh, Scott's wearing mango skin, very nice. And I miss John's. Uh, Ballard Sauvage for John. If you haven't said what you're wearing, let me know. Uh, on my left wrist, I do have my new Miss Dior. Um, I'm really loving it. Yes, it is probably uh, going to get described as generic. And I'm going to put a little bit of lie on. Let's do a little bit of lie. There we go. Um, it will get described as generic. But I like it. It does smell it when you first spray it it smells a little bit like you've just walked through the airport um duty free so it is kind of like that initial generic girls perfume um but i actually think john have you tried this one yet john i actually think john might like this um because i know you you just posted about lipstick rose the other day and i feel like it it does borderline um kind of like lipstick and powdery type scents um, nothing wrong with generic, says Erin. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, I, I am definitely one that, that complains about things being generic. Um, I do. I've kind of, lately I've got over it and I understand why things are generic because generic just means mass appealing. And of course, if you're a big brand and you, you're going to, you know, make thousands and thousands and thousands of bottles of perfume, then you do need to make them mass appealing. So I get it. I do. Um, and I think generic's okay if it's in your, if you actually, if it's in the ballpark of generic that you love. And, and this actually is, so I'm really happy to have this one. Uh, John hasn't tried the new one, uh, but if it goes that way, it does sound very nice. Yeah, it's, it's got some similar notes. You've got the raspberry, um, it's got a musk and vanilla. I don't know if there's iris or not. It wouldn't surprise me if there's a little bit in there. Um, and what's the flower? Oh, it's rose, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, it's got the rose. Um, I think you would like it. I don't know whether you would love it, but um, I think if you like that, if you like uh, Delina exclusive, um, basically it's a rose gourmand. It's maybe a touch too sweet for, for a more refined, uh, sophisticated taste. It would be the sort of thing, again, that I would probably call a guilty pleasure. 
but that's just the snob in me that would say that. And if I was out and about in the pub and a, a, someone was wearing the new Miss Dior and I caught a whiff of it, I would tell them that they smelt beautiful because that really is how it smells. It is beautiful. So yeah, love it. John says, I agree, sometimes generic is generic. The new scandal, poor harm, completely pointless subjectivity, subjectively. Oh, I tried the new robot, the uh, Paco Rabanne Phantom. And oh my God, I mean, I only sprayed and got the top notes. So, you know, I haven't given it a fair chance. And to be honest with you, I won't give it a fair chance because I sprayed it and I got that fake pineapple scent that's obviously in a lot of Aventus clones. And I was like, what the actual, like, I think what they've done is they, when it says created by uh, AI, isn't it? Uh, what's that called? Uh, intelligence, artificial intelligence. What I think that actually means is they've said to, dear computer, please tell us what are the 20 most popular men's fragrances right now. And the computer's brought up Aventus and Sauvage and Bleu de Chanel and um, everything. The computer's brought that up and then they said, now get the main ingredients of all of them and, and smush it together in a way that's acceptable. And then the computers come out with some fucking shitty formula of basically the 20 most sold men's perfumes as if they've just been smashed on the floor together. And you just have this massive of fresh aroma chemicals and fake pineapple and woody, dry woody notes and sugar. And, <laughs> and, um, and then they've said to, what was it, how many perfumes? Like whatever, 20 of the best fucking noses in the world. Now make something good out of that. <laughs> oh my god yeah um but the bottle's cute <laughs> the bottle's good uh, um erin uh, says i just want the empty phantom bottle with nothing in it yes yeah you don't you don't want anything in it um <laughs> um pineapple upside down cake is what i'm about never smelled a mentor says heba yeah, I love a bit of cake. Um, do you know it's like breakfast? We all generally don't want a gourmand breakfast. Yep, good point. Um, never enjoyed pineapple in fragrance. No, not not me either, really. I think it's maybe because you know that it's definitely not from nature. You can't, there is no pineapple absolute. Um, same with strawberry and raspberry. Unless a really clever independent perfumer goes to a whole lot of trouble. Um, it's it's a note that can't be natural. So I think when you know that, you can't help but smell it, and it's it smells unnatural. But that might just be me. Um, John says, "Good to know." Is it good then? How much I get to? Do you know what, John? You would make an amazing pictures with it. It would just be so good for um, for your Instagram. I'd love to see what you did with the bottle. But I guess you do do a lot of superimposing and stuff anyway. So yeah, you should get a sample at least and do a, I'd love you to do a review. No holds barred though. <laughs> no sitting on the fence, John. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, a, it's true. Same with strawberry. It always smells fake and ghastly, says Lizzie. Yeah, exactly. Right, I'm getting tired. So I'm getting cool and it quits. I will do um, a, another live. Uh, as and when soon soonish no doubt but I need to clean up my eyes um I've got to put my tapes my healing tapes back on the stitches as it was quite nice to have the tape off for a, a moment um Heather says I, I wore a perfume years ago that had pineapple in it I think um and John says I'll have to hunt out a sample yeah I hope you do John I'm sure you will I'm sure you will um it's everywhere now as well. It's in every single shop. Like it's not hard to find. Ah, Erin says, I hope you keep on the up and up. You look awesome. Oh, thank you, Erin. Yeah, my throat's giving out now. So I'm gonna have to go and, um, and have another hot drink. Um, Scott says, see you soon, lovely to see you. 
uh, home and well. Thank you. Uh, Lizzie says, lovely to see you back. Strength and power. <laughs> Some of you girly style. Strength and power. Um, keep healing, says Christy. See you soon. Thank you, Christy. So that's it then. Bye.